I'm Steve Drizzen, uh, the legal director of the Center on Wrongful Convictions at Northwestern University School of Law's Bloom Legal Clinic. Uh, Thaddeus Jimenez is an example of the kind of cases that we take, and in fact, he was the very first letter I received uh, shortly after I became legal director of the Center on Wrongful Convictions. TJ's case attracted me because he was only 13 at the time that he was charged with the murder of a young man. Uh, he was among the youngest people um, ever uh, tried as an adult uh, and convicted of murder in the state of Illinois. And today, I'm proud to say he is the youngest person at the time of his arrest ever to be exonerated uh, in the state of Illinois, if not the entire country. Uh, when I first reviewed TJ's letter, I was actually floored that he had been convicted of this crime. Within days of his arrest, it should have been plainly apparent to the police officers and the prosecutors in this case that they had the wrong person. First of all, his so-called co-defendant um, told the police that the true perpetrator, another person, committed the crime with him. He also told the police that he had never met TJ, he didn't know who TJ was, he had no idea why TJ was involved in this case. And he told the police officers the name and the address of the true perpetrator. Second of all, uh, the co-defendant's father secretly recorded a confession from the true perpetrator and presented that to the police officers within days after TJ's arrest. Um, police officers essentially ignored that evidence and the prosecutors in this case tried two people who had never even met each other as co-defendants uh, and gained convictions against both of them. Uh, there were so many red flags pointing the police and prosecutors in the direction of this uh, true perpetrator and we had to do that again uh, 16, and a, 16 years later. Uh, we located the true perpetrator, uh, we gave a picture and an address to the state's attorney's office and to their credit they followed up on that information and they arrested him. We learned that, that TJ um, was going to be released the first thing on Friday morning, May 1st. And um, we scrambled to get before a judge and the order um, authorizing his release and his conviction being vacated was granted around 2 o'clock or 2.30 uh, in the afternoon on Friday. We then had to drive uh, to Galesburg, Illinois, to the Hill Correctional Center to pick him up. And a three and a half hour ride took well over five hours because of construction. Yeah, we just pulled up in front of the Hill Correctional Center. It's been a crazy day. We got a call early this morning that the state's attorney's office was prepared to enter an agreed a joint motion to uh, vacate uh, TJ's sent his conviction, his sentence. Uh, and to get him released uh, from the prison today. And we've spent the whole day trying to get him released. And we've just pulled up at the, we got a court order from the judge at around uh, 1 30, quarter to two today. And then we've raced here to Galesburg to pick him up and get him out. And we're hoping that he's just ready to come out. He's got his stuff packed up. We're gonna show him this order and we hope that uh, we'll walk him out in a few minutes. This is the culmination of years and years of work. And, uh, we're just anxious to get him home. Got a bag of clothes for him since the clothes he was wearing when he was 13 years old probably don't fit anymore. Walking TJ out of prison was probably the highlight of my legal career. Um, it was the culmination of three and a half years of incredibly hard work and a lot of ups and downs, um, but it was well worth it. It was it a was phenomenal moment to see him uh, a free man. Long time. Long time.
So many remarkable moments that day, but when I was standing next to TJ, uh, he had just walked out of the prison. Stuart, come on in. And I was really able to just put my arms around him and give him a hug for the first time. I couldn't even believe that he was standing there. I mean, uh, we were just so thrilled to see him walk out the, the doors of the prison. And uh, all I could think about while I was standing next to him is he's, he's free, he's completely free. Whereas every other time I had ever visited him uh, was inside that prison uh, that he had, you know, only a dim hope of getting out of. And uh, through his work, our work, uh, the assistance of the state's attorney's office, all of a sudden, he was standing there next to me outside the prison. It was just a remarkable feeling. You are just clean. You're out fresh sleep. We then took TJ out to dinner at a steak restaurant, and we then drove to his mother's home in Elmwood Park, Illinois. By the time we got there, it was after midnight, um, but she was raring to go, waiting for him, and she raced out of the house and ran into my arms and his arms and all of our arms. It was really uh, an incredible moment. We got out a little early. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my god! Oh my god! I can't believe it! Oh my baby! Oh my god, he's here! Oh my god! He's here! Three takeaway messages in this case. First, police officers must electronically record all investigative interviews of children, whether they are suspects, whether they are witnesses, or whether they are victims. Second, courts need to be more receptive to evidence of actual innocence, particularly evidence relating to a third party's guilt and recantation evidence. Recantation evidence is frequently ignored by courts, but they need to at least have a hearing in which they can evaluate that evidence. Third, this was a 13-year-old boy at the time of his arrest. He was transferred to adult court and prosecuted as an adult and sentenced to 50 years in prison. Do we really need to be trying 13-year-olds as adults? Um, this didn't have to happen. He should not have been tried as an adult, and we need to come up with new solutions to the problems of juvenile offenders rather than trying them as adults and sentencing them oh as adults. Oh my God. <laughs> 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 Here come Bob again. <laughs>